Good day, beloved of Christ. Welcome to prayer for Monday, October the 11th, Thanksgiving Monday. Let's take a deep breath as we begin and offer our praise and thanks to God, who is the giver of every good gift. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. O come, let us worship. The Venite, please hum along. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today we're going to do a responsory, and your response is, you renew the face of the earth. In response to the prompt, O Spirit, please reply, you renew the face of the earth. You send forth your spirit, O Lord. You renew the face of the earth. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. O Spirit, together you renew the face of the earth. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. O Spirit, you renew the face of the earth. You give it to them. They gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. O Spirit, you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all God's works. O Spirit, you renew the face of the earth. Together, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. You send forth your Spirit, O Lord. O Spirit, you renew the face of the earth. Psalm number one. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's law day and night. They are like trees planted by the streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff, which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when the judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Let us pray. Giver of life, save us from the desert of faithlessness, and nourish us by the living water of your Spirit that we may bring forth fruit that will last. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Together, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For our reading today, we jump forward to the prophet Jeremiah, whose prophecies we read today concern Jehoiakim, the king, not to be confused with his son, Jehoiachin. Reading in Jeremiah chapter 36, verses 1 to 26. In the fourth year of King Jehoiakim, son of Josiah of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Get a scroll and write upon it all the words that I have spoken to you concerning Israel and Judah and all the nations from the time I first spoke to you in the days of Josiah to this day. Perhaps when the house of Judah hear all of the disasters I intend to bring upon them, they will turn back from their wicked ways and I will pardon their iniquity and their sin. So Jeremiah called Baruch son of Neriah and Baruch 
wrote down in the scroll, at Jeremiah's dictation, all the words which the Lord had spoken to him. Jeremiah instructed Baruch, I am in hiding, I cannot go to the house of the Lord, but you go and read aloud the words of the Lord from the scroll which you wrote at my dictation to all the people of the house of the Lord on a fast day. Thus you will also be reading them to all the Judeans who come in from the towns. Perhaps their entreaty will be accepted by the Lord if they turn back from their wicked ways, for great is the anger and wrath with which the Lord has threatened this people. Baruch, son of Neriah, did just as the prophet Jeremiah had instructed him about reading the words of the Lord from the scroll in the house of the Lord. In the ninth month of the fifth year of King Jehoiakim, son of Josiah of Judah, all the people in Jerusalem and all the people coming from Judah proclaimed a fast before the Lord in Jerusalem. It was then that Baruch, in the chamber of Gemariah, son of Shaphan, the scribe, in the upper court, near the new gateway of the house of the Lord, read the words of Jeremiah from the scroll to all the people in the house of the Lord. Micaiah, son of Gemariah, son of Shaphan, heard all the words of the Lord read from the scroll, and he went down to the king's palace to the chamber of the scribe. There he found all the officials in session, Elishama the scribe, Deliah, son of Shemaiah, Alnathan, son of Ekbor, Gemariah, son of Shaphan, Zedekiah, son of Hananiah, and all the other officials. And Micaiah told them all that he had heard as Baruch read from the scroll in the hearing of the people. Then all the officials sent Jehudi, son of Nathaniah, son of Shelemiah, son of Cushi, to say to Baruch, Take that scroll from which you read to the people, and come along. And Baruch took the scroll and came to them. They said, Sit down and read it to us. And Baruch read it to them. When they heard all these words, they turned to each other in fear, and they said to Baruch, We must report all this to the king. And they questioned Baruch further. Tell us how you wrote down all these words that he spoke. He answered them, Jeremiah himself recited all those words to me, and I would write them down in the scroll in ink. The officials said to Baruch, Go into hiding, you and Jeremiah. Let no man know where you are. And they went to the king in the court, after leaving the scroll in the chamber of the scribe Elishama, and they reported all these matters to the king. The king sent Jehudi to get the scroll, and he fetched it from the chamber of the scribe Elishama. Jehudi read it to the king and all the officials who were in attendance on the king. Since it was the ninth month, the king was sitting in the winter house, with a fire burning in the brazier before him. And every time Jehudi read three or four columns, the king would cut it up with the scribe's knife and throw it into the fire in the brazier until the entire scroll was consumed by the fire in the brazier. Yet the king and all his courtiers who heard all these words showed no fear and did not tear their garments. Moreover, Elnathan, Deliah, and Gemariah begged the king not to burn the scroll, but he would not listen to them. The king ordered Jerachmiel, the king's son, and Sheriah, son of Azriel, and Shelemiah, son of Abdil, to arrest the scribe Baruch and the prophet Jeremiah. But the Lord hid them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here once again, we see the classic conflict between the rule and reign of God as pronounced through the prophet and the rule and reign of the king. Jehoiakim has no intention of allowing the prophet to set the direction of the nation. And in a dramatic display of defiance, burns the scroll section by section, even as so many of his officials pleaded with him not to do so and to heed the word of the Lord, which they feared. May the Lord make us steadfast and faithful to God's promises. Amen. Let's recite the Shema together. 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us give thanks to God our Father always and for everything, responding to the prompt Lord with, We thank you. Lord, we thank you. For the beauty and wonder of creation, for all that is gracious in the lives of women and men, revealing the image of Christ. Lord, we thank you for our daily food, for our homes and families and friends, for peace in our nation. Lord, we thank you for minds to think and hearts to love, for health, strength, and skill to work, and for leisure to rest and play. Lord, we thank you. For those who are brave and courageous, patient in suffering, and faithful in adversity. Lord, we thank you. For all who pursue peace, justice, and for the healing of others. Lord, we thank you. Today we especially give thanks for the bountiful harvest, for those who work the land, farmers, migrant workers, laborers of all kinds, who labor to feed us. Thank you, O Lord, for the bounty of the earth. Lord, we thank you. For St. Philip and all the saints whose lives have reflected the light of Christ, Lord, we thank you. Creator of the fruitful earth, you made us stewards of all things. Give us grateful hearts for all your goodness and steadfast wills to use your bounty well, that the whole human family, today and especially in generations to come, may with us give thanks for the riches of your creation. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord, who has taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious toward you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Have a blessed day of giving thanks to God for the bounty around us, for the love of family and friends.